Welcome back to Tech Mimic, where you can simply view, imitate, replicate, and get on with your day. This video is our first step in answering the issue of the empty timeline in DaVinci Resolve on Linux. There are various videos on the channel about how to get DaVinci Resolve up and running on various Linux distributions, and I will leave a couple of links in the video description for your convenience. A common question in the comment sections of these videos is something like this. When I start my DaVinci Resolve, it opens up normally, but when I export our video into the timeline, the audio track is just a flat line that doesn't have any audio and the video track has literally nothing. The format is MP4 with the 8.264 codec. And indeed, this is a known issue with DaVinci Resolve on Linux. It is not because of your installation, but it is because of proprietary codecs that are not bundled with Linux like they are with Windows or macOS. And on top of that, there is also a difference in codecs being supported between the free version of DaVinci Resolve and the studio version, resulting in blank timeline issues, empty thumbnails in the media pool, and issues with the AAC audio on Linux. And to further confuse things, there is also very much a difference between what an NVIDIA GPU can do versus the AMD GPU supported codecs. So the experience of viewers has been a mixed bag. If you are on DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition with an NVIDIA GPU, you will very likely get better results, or shall we say a less challenging experience, than you get with DaVinci Resolve Free Edition on an AMD GPU. This video will focus on just the video format. The topic of sound is not discussed in this video because there is already enough detail to get across, and I would like to keep it somewhat focused. Later on, we can build from here with modular follow-up videos for specific video or sound formats, hardware configurations, and more. I'm demonstrating this on DaVinci Resolve 19 Free Edition. I've also already tested it on DaVinci Resolve 20 and it works the same. This is an Ubuntu system, but the Linux distribution doesn't matter with an Nvidia graphics card. Upon the initial installation of DaVinci Resolve, the quick system check shows a green checkbox for the operating system and the graphics card, and in the preferences menu, under the memory and GPU section, and then the GPU configuration, your GPU is recognized and listed. And lastly, this is not meant as a Resolve tutorial. I assume you know your way around Resolve a little bit. If you import a .mp4 or .mkv file, the timeline will be empty. As mentioned, codecs like H.264 and H.265 and others are readily available on Windows and macOS, but due to licensing restrictions not on Linux. And because of this, Linux users are relegated to transcoding or converting the videos into a format that Resolve can work with. And in this video, I'm going with the DNX HR format. So the answer is in converting the video format before you import them into Resolve into a format it can understand. And here I have two videos, both recorded at 25 frames per second in 1920 by 1080. One is an MPEG 4.mp4 file, and the other one is a Matroska.mkv file. Both of them were recorded with NVENC H.264 encoding. The MP4 file is reported as H.264 codec in a QuickTime container. And the .mkv file is a Matroska container with the same H.264 codec. While these files will work without any problems on Resolve on Windows or macOS, they won't work in my situation with the DaVinci Resolve Free Edition. Again, your experience might be different if you use DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition or an AMD GPU. Let's start Resolve. and open up a new project. And save it straight away to give the project a name. Then create a new timeline on the edit page. And I will go with the project settings and they are 1920 by 1080. Before importing video, to test if the GPU configuration is without issues, just add a solid color generator to the timeline.
and pick a color. If this is played back without issues, also try a title for good measure. If both are working fine, it is safe to assume that there are no issues with your GPU drivers, so let's continue with the video files and clear the timeline. Of course you can drag the video straight into the timeline, but I'm in the habit of going through the media page and to create a bin for my video files. Skip this if you want. And there the first issue becomes clear when you navigate to the video file in a media storage location, the .mkv file is not even being recognized nor listed. The .mp4 file is however there. Our first indication that this is not going to work is the black video thumbnail, and when you hover over it to scroll or scrub through the video, there is nothing visible. Let's create a video bin anyway. And drop the file in there. Then from the edit page, drop it on the timeline. And of course, completely as could be expected, there is nothing on the video track, just the audio track. That doesn't work either, by the way, but we are now only focusing on video. We might as well just clean the timeline again. And remove it from the media pool. Open a terminal on your Linux distribution through whatever method you like. I will just right click the file manager and select open in terminal to be dropped directly in the correct location where you can see both video files. We will start with the .mp4 file. To transcode the videos we will use the utility ffmpeg from the command line. There are visual tools based on ffmpeg and you can use these if you would like to. If ffmpeg is not on your system you can install it via your Linux distros software center package manager or sudo apt install or sudo dnf commands. This is an example for Debian based distros like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, but adjust accordingly. Once it is there, to transcode the .mp4 file into the dnxhr format, type ffmpeg -i and then the name or full path to the input file, so the .mp4 file dash v codec dnxhd Des b colon v 36 capital M des pix underscore fmt yuv 422p and then the output file be sure to specify dot mov as the extension. The des b colon v 36 m is required for dnx hd because you need to specify a bitrate for the resolution frame rate. And the same goes for des pix underscore fmt yuv 422p because this is not FFmpeg's default pixel format. Now if you are still with me, FFmpeg will start the transcode. And of course there are many, many options with FFmpeg, so this example is by no means a conclusive one. You can do things like transcoding the resolution, audio track and much more. Feel free to experiment, adjust and improve. I'm only showing what works for me. Once done, the output file output.mov will be there, with an encoding of dnxhr. Now let's try this one in Resolve. Open it. Load the earlier project. And have a look at the media page. And immediately the video thumbnail is visible this time around. And it can be scrubbed. Drop it in the video bin. And then drop it on the timeline where it can now be played without any issues. Next we will try the .mkv file with the exact same command, just change the input and output files.
Once done, the resulting output to .mov file will now also be in the DNX HD format, just like the earlier file. Now go back to resolve and repeat the same process. Where we end up with two converted videos that can be played back without any issues. When the video files you need to transcode are large, the transcoding with FFmpeg can take some time. And to speed up the process, you most likely want to use your actual GPU. For this, play around and add some hardware acceleration flags. For example, dash HW Excel and HW Excel underscore output underscore format. Here I'm using CUDA because this is an NVIDIA GPU. You will also note that the small source files, just a couple of megabytes, turned into much larger files. And this is to be expected because the original file format was encoded with H.264, which is a highly compressed and efficient codec. And in contrast, that is now being transcoded to DNX HD, which is a so-called looseless codec. Also, the bitrate was explicitly set to 36 Mbps, which is much higher than most compressed video. In this example, you are basically trading an efficient delivery format for editing quality. And depending on your use case, this could be exactly what you need. But if it's not, feel free to drop what is working or optimized for you in the comments to help others. Our next step could be to start looking into the ProRes format that is actually supported on Linux, even though it is an Apple codec, and it will result into smaller files. Or you could try a different bitrate than in the examples shown. Maybe also have a look at the AV1 video codec, which is an open and royalty-free video format. You can turn the lengthy FFmpeg commands into a script so that you only have to specify the script name plus the file name next time, and it can become part of your video editing workflow. You can take it a step further and add this script to the right-click menu so you can transcode and convert straight from the file explorer, or simply use a graphical FFmpeg utility, like Shutter Encoder or Handbrake. Like mentioned, editing videos with DaVinci Resolve on Linux has many hooks, angles, bells and whistles, but I hope this video was able to serve as a starting point for further investigation. That's it, hope it helped, and if it did, please like the video and keep it up. Until next time, bye!